Hey, what's up guys? Jeremy here from RoboDK. Welcome back to the second part of the video where we are covering the usage of robots inside RoboDK. This video is part of the tutorial series where we are looking at the main components of RoboDK. The robot topic was introduced in the last video, so no need to repeat ourselves here. Let's get started with part 2. We left the first video after having explored the Cartesian Joig section and the Movement section here. The next section will help you define the working envelope of your robot, also called workspace. In other words, where you can reach and where you can't reach with your robot. The first option gives you the working range of the robot wrist. It can reach all the gray mesh you are seeing on your screen. The second one is a bit bigger. It gives you the working range of the robot flange. And the third one gives you the working range of your robot tool. Therefore, this range will be highly influenced by your tool choice or design. Note that you can press the star key on your keyboard to toggle your workspace visibility. I would also like to point out that it's not because you can reach a certain point near your robot limits, that you can really work there. You need to keep in mind that as you get closer to the limits, the robot stretch itself. And the more the robot arm is stretched, the less mobility it has. Like here, I can reach this position, but I cannot move around because the robot is completely stretched. I'm pretty stuck in that position, honestly. Okay, next. Just on the side, you have the show frames options. It lets you manually toggle the visibility of your frames. Mainly the tool frame, the ref frame, and the robot flange. Okay, below that we have the joint axis jog section. As mentioned in the robot movements video, you can individually play with the angle of your joints. I can play with axis 3 for example. Let's also move this one and that one. Here we have access to the exact same copy and paste button, but instead of copying the pose, it copies the six joint values. So if I copy this list, modify a few angles like this and click paste, everything comes back to its previous position. Here we also have the home button. If you click on it, it will bring back every joint to its home position. Let's do that. As you can see, the default home value for the IRB120 is 0, 0, 0, 0, 30 degrees on axis 5 and 0. When you do robot programming, it's a good habit to always start your project from a home position. It will make sure that the robot will always be in a known configuration before moving. Remember the word configuration, we will talk about it later in this video. For the home position, you can use the default values, or you can define it yourself. Let's modify the current home position. First, select the position you prefer, mm, something like this. Copy the joints value by clicking this icon, then select parameters. In that window, Press set home position and paste the joint values. Click OK, OK again. Now if I move the robot and click on the home button, the robot comes back to the modify home position. The next thing I will show you is a bit hidden. In the joint axis jog section, we have the joint values, the sliders and the joint limits. Joints limit lets you know how much you can rotate on specific joints. Here, the joint 1 can rotate from minus 165 to plus 165 degrees. And on the other hand, the joint 3 can rotate from minus 90 to plus 70 degrees. In most cases, you have no reasons to change those values. But it can be a good idea to do so in certain situations. For example, if your robot is equipped with a joint 6 that can rotate infinitely, you want to increase those two numbers. 
Infinite is obviously not a valid parameter, but a very big number would do the trick. So to modify the value, just double click on the joint limit value. Here we have the minimum from joint 1 to joint 6. Let's add a 0 to joint 6. Now it can go from minus 4000 degrees to plus 400 degrees. So let's do the same for the maximum. Perfect. Now the slider can go from minus 4000 to plus 4000 degrees. And as you can see, the tool is rotating accordingly. At the moment, we have a bit more than 11 turns in the negative side and 11 turns in the positive. At this point, you can add more range if you need. So that was the first situation where the joint limits can be changed. Another situation would be quite the opposite if you want to limit the motion of your robot. It can be for space or safety reasons, for example. Let's say that the robot is installed right beside a wall, like this. I would clearly advise you not to do that if possible, but let's say that we have no choice. It means that on the joint one, we cannot use the full range of our robot. We would end up crashing in the wall, and we all know that crashing a robot in a wall is not a good thing. We can eyeball that a reasonable range for the joint one is minus 85 to plus 85 degrees. Let's put those limits in place. And now it's impossible for me to hit the wall because of joint one. I will still have to manage joint 2 though. Once it's done, I could launch an automated path, for example using one of our CAD plugins, and there would be zero chance that it crashed into the wall. With those limits, the path algorithm simply can't go that far. It needs to work inside of the joint limits. Before leaving this subject, let me put something straight. Those limits are software limits, therefore, you should think of a second layer of safety on the robot itself. In a situation like this, or any situation where you need to limit the rotation of your joints, you can install physical limitation. Those are standard stopper that can be installed directly on most industrial robots. Safety is not something to neglect when you're working with very fast and strong machines like robots. Okay, one last thing about joint limits. You can also modify them in the parameters window. In this section, you have the minimum and the maximum for each joint. Last section of the robot panel, the robot configuration. What are exactly robot configurations? A robot configuration is pretty much the joint values needed to reach a specific position. If I move the robot here, I need this set of joint value to be able to reach that position. But most of the time, more than one set of joints value can result in the same position with the same orientation. In this particular case, we have nine different options. You can select them with your mouse, or you can scroll through them with your up and down arrow keys. One of the things that create more possible configuration is when your robot possess a joint that can rotate more than 360 degrees. It gives the robot the possibility to do a full rotation and still end up at the same position. There are two main things to think about when you're selecting a robot configuration. Axis singularities, especially the one involving axis 5 reaching 0 degree, creating an alignment of joint 4 and 6. And axis limits. This one is very important if you use auto-generated path, like when you import path from a CAD part. If your path needs you to rotate this axis in that direction and you chose that configuration to start your path, you didn't leave yourself much room to work. If, instead, you selected this configuration, you increased your chances of completing the path without hitting this joint limit. If your position possesses a lot of configuration and some of those are clearly not good for your situation, you can filter them. Press the More Option button. This new window gives you all the configuration and some filter options. Do you want joint one facing forward or backward? 
If possible, we usually try to use the front option. If I select that, I'm left with only four options. I can test them. If you take a look at the robot model, the joint four, five and six are the ones involved in those different configurations. The ones that I filter with the front options are the weird one with most of the robot harm being below the target. If we add stuff in the station, like a table or something, those configurations would be more at risk of collisions. The elbow up down filter will consider the joint tree value. With this robot in particular, the only way you can have an elbow configuration choice is if joint tree reach its limit of minus 90 degrees. As you can see in this list here, all choices use the same elbow configuration. Therefore, it's not a valid filtering parameter here. The last filter, the flip and non-flip, is linked to the joint four. If you want your wire connections facing this way or facing that way. This decision will often be influenced by the tool cable management. At some point, if you need cables or hoses along the robot arm, you cannot rotate infinitely without breaking them. Obviously, modifying the value of joint four will affect joint five and six. So you need to keep an eye on those three. If you click on show all, it will reset the filters. And if you click on recommended, it will give you the most likely choices. Joint one facing forward and elbow up. Okay, in future video, we will face situation where using a different configuration will help us. Those situation and those examples should help you better understand the concept. Okay, one last trick before finishing the robot tutorial. If for some reason you started building a station, you created something very nice with a few paths, a few parts, a tool, etc, etc. And at some point you realize that you need to change the robot model. There is no need to redo all the work. Just right click the robot in the station tree and select replace robot. All the robots that are in your local library will be available. If the robot you're looking for is not there, simply go on our website, download the robot you want from the library and add the file to this folder on your computer and select your robot. Every link, target, reference frame, tool that you created with the previous robot will be kept. Okay, that's pretty much everything for today's video. If you think those videos are helpful, please hit the thumbs up button. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. This way you can come back and look at the newest tutorials. The next video will cover another vital topic, robot tools. Have a good day, guys.